Hi, I'm Larry, and let me be among the first to congratulate you on your new position at a dry cleaner or coin laundry mat. There are so many things that you're gonna need to learn over the next several weeks that this video was produced to make your first day a little easier. We're gonna give you a guided tour of the plant and introduce you to various pieces of equipment and procedures that you'll need to know as part of your job. And while working at a professional cleaning facility is not inherently dangerous, we are gonna introduce you to some safety procedures that will help you with your position. We're also going to introduce you to some customer service techniques, which are not only helpful to your employer, but helpful to you to help you enjoy your job even more. So come on, let's get started. Chances are this isn't the first time that you've been in a professional dry cleaners or a laundry mat. However, it is the first time that you find yourself right here. You're behind the counter. You're an employee and there are a set of responsibilities, procedures and techniques that you'll need to learn to be able to fill your role as an employee at this facility. And that's what day one training is all about. Let's take a look at some of the things you're going to see behind the counter that are now part of your new job. It's important to note that no two facilities are exactly alike. Different brands of equipment, different software, different procedures and techniques. But it is important to know that there's a commonality between the different facilities as well. And they'll all have similar equipment with similar job functions, like this machine right here. Your facility may have a simple cash register or it may have something like this. This is a POS system. POS stands for point of sale. It's specialized software for your industry. In this case, we're looking at a software called Compass Max. Compass Max has custom software for the dry cleaning and laundering industry. And various different menus within this software help the facility to track their jobs, help them to find customers, help them to locate the status of various projects. For example, where a suit may be in the cleaning process or if it's ready for pickup. Learning this software or this POS system or your cash register system will be part of further training you'll get after day one. But being introduced to this so that you know what it is when you see it is a very helpful start. This video will not go into all of the details and the use of this POS system. You'll receive that training over the next few days. For locations that do not have a point of sale system, you might have something like this, a simple cash register. And it means that different processes are in place because each item that's brought in or out doesn't have an automatic price that's built into the POS. These systems require you to create invoices or receipts or job tickets. In this case, I have a job ticket in my hand. This job ticket will record every item which is brought in to be dry cleaned or laundered. And then there's a price list that's on the counter right here. This price list features line items for each of the most common items which will come in and out of the store. And these are the prices which must be written on the job ticket. So you'll notice that this price list has the most common items which are brought into this specific location from pants, shirts, dresses, and suit coats to three-piece suits, ties, hoodies, sweatshirts, and more. There's a price list not only for clean and press, but for press only. This system may be very similar to the system that you'll have at your location, especially if you do not have a POS system. The facility where you now work may have a traditional time clock where you physically punch a card at the beginning and end of your shift to record when you start and stop your shift. Or you may have a POS system that has a time clock built into it. And let's take a look at how that may work for you. In the circumstance that you have a time clock built into your POS system, it may work similar to this, to where you actually have an icon or a menu at the top of your screen for a time clock. In this case, I'll go ahead and click the icon and it now asks for the operator number. I'm entering the number and I'm now able to log in and say I'm going to clock in, clock out. It's going to show my time card and the various aspects of when I've clocked in and clocked out. This tracks your time and your time, of course, tracks your payroll. In addition to using a point of sale system to log in and log out with your hours and your schedule, uh, you may use something like this. This is a combination that sort of bridges the gap between a punch card system and a write-in system. This facility uses a punch card to write in the time that you start and the time that you end. This is your time clock at some locations. And never under any circumstances fill out someone else's time cards. You could be fired. If your location has a simple cash register system, you probably have a system like this as well. It's a system where each employee agrees on the amount of cash in the register at the beginning and end of each shift. So it's your first or second day and you're at the counter and a customer walks up and chances are sort of good that this might happen. You freeze. You don't know what to say. Let's make that easy for you. 
So rather than getting nervous or wondering what to say, here's a few ideas that will help you on your very first day. It's three simple lines. Hi, welcome, how can I help you? Hi, welcome, how can I help you? Hi, welcome, how can I help you? There's now a nice little bond that's being created between you and the customer, your willingness to help them and letting them know that they're welcome. Now they may even ask you some questions that you don't know the answer to, but guess what? There's somebody close by that you can get those answers from. Chances are you will not be left alone on your shift for your first several days at your facility. You'll get a real good handle on how to answer the most common questions before you're ever left alone. Greeting a customer in a happy and friendly way is, is very important, but sometimes, and it doesn't happen that often, but a customer's gonna walk in and they're just not very happy. I'm really unhappy. Helping an unhappy customer doesn't have to be an unpleasant experience. Simply stick to a three-point plan. Step one, let the customer know that you heard them. Two, let them know that you understand. And three, let them know you're going to find someone who can help them with their problem. As long as they know those three things, they're gonna be a whole lot more understanding to your situation and even understand that you may be a new employee. Following this three-step plan will help make this situation a whole lot more comfortable. Check this out. Sir, I hear you. I understand that you're upset and I'm gonna find someone who can help you with your problem. You know, there are customers that are not walking through the door, but rather calling you on the phone. And it's important to extend that same common courtesy to them as well, and a smile in your voice, greeting them in the same way you would a walk-in customer. The phone's ringing, pick it up. Hi, thanks for calling, can I help you? That simple. Now each employer has different ways that they'd like you to answer the phone, and you'll learn those over the next few days. But the common courtesy that's extended and the smile in your voice is what's most important. Now what you're seeing right here is not untypical of what you'll find behind the counter at a lot of professional cleaners. There are bags of clothes which are being brought in or baskets of laundry that need to be done and hangers and racks of clothes and bags. These are behind the counter and it's important that you're aware of this and you're looking for them. Watch where you're stepping because they could potentially be trip hazards. It's not uncommon to see these things. It's part of your work environment. Being conscious of this from your very first day is gonna help make your job a whole lot easier Easier because this is the environment in which you work. You know, when you think about what you see when you walk into a dry cleaner, there's one visual that's pretty common, and it's this. It's the rack where all the finished clothing are at. Now they're tagged and they're in a specific order and they're all on this rack. It's actually a pretty easy system and even computers have made it even easier. If you can see on the wall right here, we can actually punch in the ticket number of a specific job from the, that's been coming into the dry cleaners and the racks will automatically move to that specific ticket, making it easier to pull off the rack. Or if your system doesn't have a computerized method, you'll have a system that looks just like this, a forward and backwards, and it works just like this, forward and backwards. There are thousands and thousands of garments on this rack, and if you were going through trying to find them just by what it looks like, it's very hard. But if you know the item number that you're looking for, it's pretty easy. That's part of what makes the job that much easier as well, is a very organized structure of knowing a specific garment and a ticket number that's tracked by your POS or whatever other procedure that your employer provides for you at your location. Many professional dry cleaner and laundry mats have a system very similar to this to help tag or identify garments that need some special attention. For example, a customer may bring you a dress or a shirt that has a stain on it, or that they require a special pressing or that they want starch. When those are the case, you're gonna have these special little tags, which may, for example, as you see here, pre-spot. This is something that would go on the garment where a specific spot is at that they know that they're gonna to wanna to have treated. These are things that the customer will draw attention to, or if they're asking for starch on their shirt, you'll have labels that will be assigned to them. Your specific facility are gonna have their own set of procedures, but they may have a procedure that's very much like this. So being aware of the tagging system of, of special attention that needs to be applied to certain garments is gonna be an important part of what you should know on your very first day as well. Also, uh, something called a collar stay. Your collar may have these in them as well. It is a small plastic piece that goes inside the collar and they look like this. They are removed and replaced with every dry cleaning or laundry that happens at most professional cleaners. So these collar stays and knowing where these are in your facility are gonna be important to know.
There are several manufacturers of coin laundry equipment, both washers and dryers. There are small units, large units, and heavy duty units. And since they're mechanical, from time to time, there could be mechanical failures. If the facility where you now work has coin operated equipment, you'll have a process something like this. These two documents. This first document, simply it's a tag out. It says, sorry, I am temporarily out of order. Yours may be a different color, have different text or whatever, but if a coin operated piece of equipment no longer works, something like this is gonna be placed on that piece of equipment. And if this happened, chances are somebody lost money in the machine. So you'll need to have a form like this, which you'll fill out on behalf of the customer to be able to provide the refund. Most coin operated laundries have carts like these and it's important to know that these carts need to be in a specific spot. Fire code prohibits these from being in front of the machines when you're not loading and unloading. So if you see these in your facility like this, take a moment, let the customer know that you need to move them and move them back out of the way and put them underneath the table. That way it's safe, they don't block the aisles and it keeps us within fire code. Here's something that just seems like good common sense, yet it's commonly overlooked. Here we have a typical coffee counter, and since we're in the cleaning business, you'd think this would be nice and tidy, but so often it's not. Take a moment when you're walking by, if it looks like this, take a moment, just pick it up, get a little tidier. It's a simple, what's it take, 15, 20 seconds, and your coffee rack looks all nice and clean again. A very simple thing you could do to make your facility look a little nicer. Now you can't walk through a laundromat anywhere without seeing these. They're the vending machines that supply laundry soap and fabric softener and such. You're gonna receive very specific training on the machines at your location so that you can reload them with new soap and handle the coins. A coin laundry mat, not the most exciting place to hang out, especially if it's your day off or after you've put in a double shift. And often those customers who are here doing their laundry have done just that. They're here on their day off, they finished a double shift and they're here doing their laundry. You know what can really make their day a lot better is when you can remind them that you've just made a fresh cup of coffee or that the new magazines are on the magazine rack or simply saying, hi, how are you today? Is there anything I can do to help you? Just the friendliness that you can communicate to the customers that are in your coin laundry area Area is just one more way you can make their experience that much better and have a better day yourself. At this time, we're gonna walk back into the plant and take a look at some of the equipment that's very common at most dry cleaning and laundry facilities. It's important to watch your head because you're gonna find a lot of racks like this that's back there and it's got some low ceiling areas, some spots that we wanna be careful with. So let's watch our head, be careful around the equipment, and follow me. This is Kim. Kim's a professional presser. She's back pressing these garments with this piece of equipment, one of many different kinds of industrial presses that you'll find in the plant at a production facility like this. Kim knows how to operate this equipment. She's been certified on it. She knows all the safety aspects of it. Until you learn all the safety aspects and have the proper training, don't come near this equipment. It's hot, it could be very dangerous. So stay away from equipment that you are not certified on and know how to operate. Operate. This is a piece of equipment that very few people ever see. This is a professional dry cleaning machine. Now, when we think of dry cleaning, you may be thinking that there are no fluids. Well, that's not quite true. A lot of fluids are used, but no water is being used in the cleaning process with dry cleaning. This piece of equipment is very specialized. A very specific set of instructions need to be input here by someone who is trained and certified on this machine. This video is not, again, to teach you how to use this piece of equipment, but to introduce you to it so that you can see it and know what it is. You'll have something just like this in your dry cleaning facility. I'd like you to meet Peggy. Peggy is a stain specialist, and where she's working right here is a stain station. Here's what's cool about it. If you bring in a garment to a dry cleaning facility or a professional laundry mat and it's got a real deep stain and it's complicated, Peggy here is the expert who's going to get that stain out. She's got at her arsenal all these different chemicals that she knows how to treat each of those stains with. I mean, you've got just tons of experience at this. Yeah, I got about 25 years. 25 years experience at removing stains, that's incredible. In the next several weeks, you too could be receiving specific training on how to remove stains and become a specialist just like Peggy. As you can see, Peggy is using steam plus additional chemicals to remove the stains on this jacket. Steam is a scalding hazard and should only be used by someone who is a specialist that has been trained in the use of steam on garments. Or your stain station may look something like this with a variety of chemicals and a stain chart. 
This stain chart identifies the different types of stains and the chemicals that you use on these stains. Now you'll not be removing any stains in your first few days of work because using the wrong chemical on a specific stain could actually ruin the garment. You'll receive some very specific training in this area and you'll get it down like a pro. As you need to interact with members of your staff in your production plant who are working with steam, be very mindful to not approach them from behind. Don't surprise them. Uh, they're working with scalding steam. It is a burning and scalding hazard. So approach them carefully and wait for a good time when the steam is not on to approach them if you need to speak to them. This is a very common sight in just about every plant. Wherever there's a possibility of a poking hazard from a pole that's maybe a little low, they tend to put tennis balls on them or other obstacles to prevent you from getting hurt. So when you see this, it's another reason why you just might want to duck. When you're walking around the plant and you're standing somewhere, be very conscious of where you're at. Pay attention because you could be right in the way of a moving conveyor and not even realize it. At any given time, the conveyor can start moving just like that. This is Katie, and Katie's running sort of a complicated piece of equipment back here that requires some specialized training. It's robotic equipment, actually, that's used in the dry cleaning process to get the really nice finish on the shirts and the collars and the cuffs that you get when you have your shirts professionally dry cleaned. This is the cuff and collar press that Katie's on right now. She lines up the shirt with the cuff and the collars in just the right place, and she can do two shirts at one time. Very cool piece of equipment. It also requires some specialized training. As you'll notice that she steps back, the machine does its job, and it's getting that perfect cuff and perfect collar. Meet the dress shirt robot. Thousands of shirts a day go across this machine. It makes a perfect shirt press every time after the collar and the cuff press has been completed. And Katie's gonna put a shirt on here in a moment and we're gonna watch how this process works. But using a robotic technique, it produces a perfect shirt every time. Again, a piece of equipment that you don't wanna get near the operator or the equipment until you've been properly trained and certified. Not all equipment is the very latest in robotic technology. Some of it was built 50, 60, 70 years ago and still in use today. Like this piece of equipment here, it still presses thousands and thousands of shirts a week and will be doing so for decades. Meet Susie, Susie Steamer. She's been around for a long time. She makes it easier to steam garments that cannot be steamed on the presses. Now Susie's specialty is gowns, dresses, and sports jackets, but your facility may also have a shirt steamer, which has sleeves and makes doing shirts a breeze. Ask any alteration specialist how they're doing and they'll say, so, so. But seriously, folks, sewing machines, thread, all of the things that you need to do alterations, but mostly the skill of the person who does the alterations is an important part of every facility which offers this service. There's a large variety of alterations which is provided at virtually all of our facilities, and all of these alterations are usually listed right here on our price list. When you think of the items that are being professionally cleaned at a dry cleaning plant or a professional cleaning facility, you generally think of garments or clothing, suits, dresses, but this is also being cleaned in back. Other items that you may not be thinking of, such as professional cleaning of draperies. This is a professional pillow cleaning machine. Most people have no idea what's in their pillows other than the feathers. Dust mites and other microbacterial items can be in their pillows. This machine professionally cleans them and makes them safe and frankly a lot healthier. Like virtually every other piece of equipment in a professional cleaning facility such as this, you're gonna wanna stay a safe distance away from any machine that you have not been trained and certified on. And even then, if you're not operating it, please stay a safe distance away. Many professional dry cleaning and laundry services have these. They're vans that service route business. Route business services customers, residents, businesses, which sign up for a courtesy service to have their laundry and dry cleaning pick up and delivered at their home or business. The only real difference between route business and walk-in business is the method in which you get the clothing and deliver them back to the customer. With the route business, it's direct to the home or business. In your walk-in business, they come to the store to pick up and deliver. If you have a route business, you'll also have one of these. This is a garage area where items are coming in and out from the vans and being staged for cleaning or being staged to being loaded back into the vans for the next delivery day on its route.
there's few things that come as close to someone's being as their clothes. I mean, they've handpicked them. They, they choose to wear them. It's what personifies them. And you've been given the privilege and the honor of professionally cleaning them. It's really an honor when you think about it. It's something to be taken seriously. It's why proper training and proper understanding of your role and your job at your facility is so important. On behalf of all the members of MILD, the Michigan Institute of Laundry and Dry Cleaners, welcome to your first day. Congratulations and good luck.